Hello everyone, um, Jill here. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, today's video is going to be about watercolor and specifically about watercolor challenges that um, happen on Instagram. And I'm making this video for a cherry on top because they're such a great source of watercolor supplies and inspiration. So I want to talk a little bit about supplies before talking about Birdtober, which is the current challenge I'm involved in, um, which is, as it sounds, um, about painting birds. So, um, but before we get into that, let me talk about what I've been using for this challenge and um, just kind of what my procedure is. I, I often go between my house and my boyfriend's house, my mom's house. So I like a little kit that I travel with and it's very simple. That's a wonderful thing about watercolors is they're really portable. So I use a mechanical pencil um, to do the drawing and oops, a kneaded eraser. So those are a couple basic things just to get started. Some people don't even bother with a sketch. They just go right in. I think with birds, it's a little bit harder to do that. In my opinion, you need to kind of adjust proportions and think about the drawing. I like to do that anyway. So this is my starting point. Um, but the focus really is on the watercolor. This is like very old, but the thing that I want to mention about the water receptacle is it's really good to have something that's divided where you can have clean water and dirty water. Um, you can also have like a couple peanut butter jars, that sort of thing. That'd be fine. Most of you know all of this, but I'm just kind of going through the basics to so those of you who are just going to get started with watercolor. Um, okay, these are three examples. I should have opened this before starting because these Daniel Smith tins can be a little, or, uh, cases can be a little challenging for me. I think it helps to start from the side when you open them. Okay, so this is one that is just blues. There are, I don't know, like five or so available at a cherry on top. Um, this one is the mixing set and it has all of the, these are called half pans. Um, all of the half pans filled to the brim, like really with a lot of watercolor. This will last quite a long time. Um, the nice thing about these smaller sets, they're, uh, they're less expensive. They get you started. One is for flowers, um, so really pretty colors for that. One's called Inspiration, I think. And then there are some uh, one-color sets like this. Anyway, they're extra half pans, and this is for your tubed watercolors, and a cherry on top has all sorts of Daniel Smith um, tubes, and probably other brands too. I really like the Daniel Smith. And um, so you just squirt it in let it sit overnight, and you have your own custom palette. Okay, so that's one option. The other option from a cherry on top is um, Archer and Olive. And um, th this, you, you buy this little wooden box separately, but I just love it. It's so adorable, and it has like a magnetic closure, and it's an investment. But once you do that, then you can buy the different sets and trade out uh, the colors, depending on what you want to do. So far, I just have these colors, which is a really beautiful set. I can't remember which this one's called, if it's just the warm set, but at any rate, you, you can find it in, in the shop, I think. I think these are still in stock. Um, Cherry on Top started carrying my very favorite uh, paint brushes, which are these black velvet. One of these is really old and one is brand new, but the old one that I've used so much is still holding up really well. Um, these are both size eight, and for me, that's all I need. I don't really need a small brush, even for a tiny, tiny bit, like of an eye highlight on a bird or something. This has a really nice tip. When it's wet, you can you can tell more. But uh, I really strongly, these are an investment, but they last forever. They're wonderful brushes. The other thing that I got from a cherry on top are these little watercolor paper pads, and you can do all sorts of cute things with these, and I've done some of that too. But currently, I also just like using them to test out colors. And you might think, well, that's silly and a waste, but I like to do it on watercolor paper. So, um, so for me, it's not a waste and, um, and I layer them over and so forth. So I make pretty good use of every inch of this paper, but, um, but these are just good to be aware of. I, I'm not sure if they still have them, they're Prima, but I did get them from a cherry on top. Um, okay, so that's the supplies part of this. The other thing I wanted to just say, like give you just a few tips. These will be in a blog post, by the way. Um, a blog post coming to a cherry on top. And so you can go there to follow up the video or maybe you're coming here to the video after seeing the blog post. 
but um, I'm going to show you my birds. Maybe I'll do that first and then, then talk about a few things. So let's just look. I will say these challenges, they're often a month long. I did birds in December. That was my first one. And then I did it again the next year. So I have two 30-day challenges under my belt. And then I did the one that comes up in February, which is called February. <laughs> and um, and then last year I bit, did Birdtober and um, I completed it. And for those who complete it, you get a little, um, a, a little uh, reward in the mail, which was for me the sticker. Um, so I put it on top of the notebook I used. Um, I used, I'm not sure what a cherry on top has, but I'm sure they have good sketchbooks that you could use. When I first started doing these, I didn't use watercolor sketch, sketchbooks. I just used paper that could handle wet media. Now I'm using watercolor. These are from Etcher. Um, and uh, they come in a pack of three. Oh, there's a whale to start, <laughs> but um, okay. So this is what my birds look like. Last year I did more notes about the birds. I've been a little bit pressed for time this year, so I haven't done that because sometimes I look up things about the birds later after I've done the painting and um, trying to just keep up with the, the daily challenge. Let me say a little bit about that though. Um, if it sounds intimidating, I start mine at 9.30 p.m on the day of the challenge. So and the other night I started at like 10, 15. Um, if you are only spending as I am half an hour, 45 minutes, something like that, you can just save it for the end of your day when you're relaxed and don't feel pressured about fitting it in. Just get in a habit. And if that's not a good time of day for you, if you're tired, just some other time of day, it really is very doable. As I said, I've done it many times. So, um, so anyway, that's what I want to say about the challenge. And you might say, like, why do such a thing? Practice. That's so key with watercolor, like just giving you the chance to repeat something. And for me, it's been good to repeat the same subject matter with birds. I did 100 days, too. That was like any kind of watercolor. And that was helpful for me. But, um, but they're fun, and they give you that all-important practice. Just show up. A few of your birds you'll like, many of them will just be practice birds, you know, they won't be maybe your favorite, but they, they all teach you something. And I really strongly recommend it if you're new to watercolor, especially, or even if you just want to like brush up some rusty skills. Um, okay, so let's see. The other thing I wanted to talk a little bit about, and you, you can see it more in some of my birds than others, but as I said, I start with a pencil sketch. That's only about uh, five, seven minutes, something like that, the start of doing the bird. I have to adjust things. Some people don't like that where they, you know, grab their eraser and have to keep going with different proportions, different angles. Uh, I use reference photos, as most people do, because birds are like they're in motion. It's really, really hard unless you're using a photograph to do them from life. So, um, so I gather some reference photos on my phone, you know, put them in my camera roll. Um, there, there are a lot that are copyright copyright free, just photos that are available of birds. And, um, and then I sketch it and I do erase when the angle looks really wrong and I try again. And when I first started, and a lot of people make the heads too big, the legs can be hard to do. And, you know, it's fun though. I find it lots of fun to keep going back and trying to get it right. Um, but as I said, I set myself some time limits so that that doesn't take up all my time because I know I can adjust things with the watercolor too. And I know when I'm done, I'm going to look and I'm going to say that body isn't long enough or, you know, I'm going to learn some things. So just keep in mind, you're not doing works of art. You're doing sketches in watercolor as a way to learn. Um, okay, so I wanted to say that about, and also what about the lines that show through? Do you need to erase? My own approach is no. I just let the pencil lines be there. Even if there's like, like something that's like way out here. I might erase it a little bit, but I'm not going to go over the watercolor and like erase every bit of pencil. You might want to do that. And it is possible to do that, but I, I, you know, I'm doing these quickly and in a sketchy way. So that doesn't matter so much to me. Um, okay. Uh, so, so first, um, the supplies you need. Second, remember that challenges are out there and they help you practice. Third, pencil sketch and use photo references from the web, um, and it's all about learning. Fourth, um, mixing and layering color. Um, I don't know if you can see, but, and it's really kind of hard for me to demonstrate this because it varies so much from bird to bird, but I, I do allow a little drawing time for some things, especially with this paper where it moves around a lot, but I just like grab color, and then I grab a different color, and I mix right in the paper, and then I drop 
I drop watercolor in to different places, especially if I want one area to be darker. It's very fast and loose. I don't do like a traditional watercolor where you're probably like doing a layer that's light and then a darker layer and so forth. And, you know, I just, I just don't take that time for these. So that's my approach. Um, I wanted to talk particularly about um, a couple things. One, well, first, let me just show you some birds. The, this is last year's challenge, this, this sketchbook. This is this year's. This is actually the first one was a, I had to use a different uh, sketchbook for some reason. So the first one is a frogmouth. Isn't this a cool bird? This is a nocturnal bird. I actually saw one this summer at a zoo in a dark room. It was so exciting because I had done this picture first. So anyway, um, that that's there. And I saw an owl last summer that I wanted to capture in here. But this is my first one for this year, a rooster, which is the first part of the challenge called Birdtober. And um, so here they are, wild and crazy penguin. Um, one thing that doesn't really show up on Instagram, and I tried to catch it in some of the photos for the blog, is that you've got these two-page spreads. Usually I just post the, pic the picture of the bird. I loved this bird. This is a zebra finch, and they're so adorable with their little striped tail and uh, dots. Um, I'm going to say more about putting in highlights, but long as we're on this bird, uh, the other supply that I didn't talk about is Bleed Proof White. Um, this ink is really nice for the highlights. You could also use gouache in white, um, but uh, you can see I went in, added the little dot that brings the eye to life, um, did the, the white for the stripes and the white dots with the ink. So even though it's all watercolor and pencil, there is this final layer of a little bit of white, a little bit of highlight here and there. There's usually a little highlight on the beak. So that's a good good thing to have in your um, your arsenal of supplies. Isn't this a wild bird? It's called a secretary bird. Sometimes I like to do a couple, draw from a couple very different reference photos. And so that's what I did here. So we could kind of see those long eyelashes. Um, Oh yes, the this is like a parakeet style bird. This is so much fun. I want to talk about like doing dark birds versus colorful birds. The colorful birds, you have a lot of like I kind of mix this red using magentas and yellows. Um, so I do sometimes do a little mixing. I should talk about that. You can grab like a, a I like porcelain palettes. Um, okay, the sun's coming in. I'm gonna like pull the drapes a little bit. Um, you can use like that kind of palette, but you can also just use, if you're just doing these small sketches, just use the top of the, um, it depends, you know, it depends on what style you develop and how much mixing you do. If you're doing quite a bit of mixing, I really recommend one of those porcelain palettes or whatever kind of material you like. Um, but yeah, so some of them are going to be bright and that gives you a chance to, to have fun. Um, also, I just turn my sketchbook if I've got like a bird that is bigger and is going to take more space so I don't feel so cramped. Um, this might give you an example too of like the tree. You can either do branches and trees or keep it really simple or do a full background. I tend to keep it simple for most of them. Okay, I wanted to talk about iridescence and, and building up blacks. When I first started the challenge, I tried to do blackbirds with black paint. It made me really unhappy because it's very flat and you really don't catch the, all the shine and interest in their feathers. It's a lot more fun to layer in the blues and the greens. Indigos and other dark blues, but even some brighter blues and some really dark greens, rich greens. And pretty soon as you layer those and just keep putting them in, to your first layer, even when it's still damp, because as I said, I do these quickly, um, you get a nice rich black. Let me show you a couple other examples of iridescence or blackbirds. I kind of marked this, so I should go to my bookmark here. This is called a bower bird. And I know it looks very purple, but it also looks like really dark and, and it was so much fun to do. And so um, you can see with both of these, how the dark bird comes from the blues and the greens, just layered, just mixed, just put on, uh, on top of each other until you get the effect you like. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is with feathers or particular markings, I will gesture toward that like put little bits of it and little lines occasionally, but 
if I look at what other people are posting, some people are so good with texture and they put a lot into that and they're like very, very feathery birds. So far, I'm not really going in that direction. So this dove that's right here is a good example of, of how I did some of it um, by putting in spots, putting in a little white ink to indicate the feather marks here and thought this marking on the neck was important to capture, but it's very loose and approximate. Um, here you see granulation, which I was really going for. Some of the watercolors will granulate, granulate, meaning kind of separate in this way that I find really cool, really love. And that, to me, gives the effect of a natural texture. So I rely on that more than actually like painting feathers in detail. Um, okay, I think that's really probably about it. And I've shared, oh, I didn't share this wild eagle. This is a Philippine eagle. Not like the bald eagle, <laughs> bald eagle we're really used to in the U.S. because this, he, this guy's far from bald. He, he, he blended into the next page, which is another thing. If you're using a sketchbook like this, you don't have to have that be any kind of boundary for you. This is the bird I did last night, a, a, a seabird called an av uh, avocet. Um, okay. I think that's really all I wanted to share and there'll be more in the blog post or kind of just a write up of the things I've talked about here. But I really strongly if you ha suggest if you have not done these kinds of challenges that you get yourself some watercolors uh, and jump on board and you can also do part of a challenge just to get your feet wet with it and then maybe do another one in December, that kind of thing. But I, I came on here um, in part just to in encourage those of you who um, like watercolor and have dabbled in it a little bit, but haven't really, um, you know, got, gone in off the deep end. <laughs> but you can do that in a, like an incremental way, in a way that's really simple and fun. So I encourage you. And um, anyway, thanks for showing up today.